This is Rogers TV, Toronto, only on Rogers. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Today we're talking about consumer protection with Omvic, and as always, our Ask the Mechanic segment. You can give us a call with your questions on the Lemonade Car Show. <laughs> Hi and welcome to the Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Omvic on Rogers TV. I'm your host Lorraine Sommerfeld and tonight as always we'll be answering all your car questions. Lemonade is brought to you by Omvic, the Ontario Motor Vehicle Industry Council and produced by the APA, the Automobile Protection Association. The APA is a consumer association, it's membership based and non-profit so we benefit you the consumer. You can reach us at apa.ca or by phone at 416-204-1444. Tonight we're talking about consumer protection with OMVIC. We'll also be answering all your general automotive questions. Joining me today is Terry O'Keefe, he's the Director of Communications with OMVIC, and George Inney, he's the President of the APA. We'll also be taking your calls at 416-446-7090. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Oh, it's great to be nice here. Nice to have you Thank both you. back. The season nice. closer. The season closer, yeah. That, yeah. Not, you know how you're it's cleaning up. the best to the last, right? <laughs> That's exactly what we decided <laughs> when we were putting it together. <laughs> You have been having some fun. Omvic has been um, actually a news release you sent out even just a few hours ago. Why don't you tell us what's been preoccupying your week, Terry? Well, this is something George is intimately aware of as well. All in pricing. In Ontario, all in pricing is the law. It's really that simple. For dealer advertising, if a dealer advertises a price for a car, it has to include every fee that that dealer intends to charge, with the exception of HST and licensing. Okay, so when I open an ad in the paper and I see a big price, that price has to have everything but HST and licensing in it. That's correct, if it was placed by a dealer. Okay. Manufacturers are not bound by the Motor Vehicle Dealers Act, which is the legislation we enforce. So if it's a manufacturer's ad, it doesn't have to be an all-in price. But if it's a dealer's ad, it must be. Okay, you brought actually some visual stuff. You've, we've got a picture here, can you show me what you mean, what this ad here, the Mirage. Right, so this is a, a, one of the new Mirages, under $10,000. That's their line. And if that was a Mitsubishi ad, that would be legal. Mm -hmm. But it's not. That's a dealer's ad. We've blurred out the dealer's name there. Obviously, that price doesn't include freight and PDI. It doesn't include the administration fee that that dealer charges. We actually shopped that car, posing as a consumer, and it was well over $12,000, the actual price of the car, not including taxes. So 25% higher actually than in the ad. So how are consumers, there's a lot of times you can't really tell if that ad's been placed by a dealer or, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, a lot of us, yeah. we kind of confuse the two. The dealer is, Especially you know, the manufacturer. Like that, they corporate, they have all the fine yeah. print of yeah. the corporate ad. Yeah, if, if it's got a dealership's name mm -hmm. or dealership's website or dealership's phone number, if it's directing you to that dealer, then it's a dealer's ad. Okay. Okay. If, if the ad just says, here's XYZ manufacturer and here's some information about our car, then it was placed by the manufacturer and that and that's, you know, we, do, we don't control uh, manufacturers, we don't, have, we don't govern them. Terrible loophole tells you who's powerful in Ontario, the car makers lobbied. To get that. To get out. Declared. But they said, don't worry, we'll still, we'll, we'll be clean, we just don't want you poking around. And as it turned out, they're not clean. Their ads, all those 99, 95, 99, 98 cars are fakes. The real car is anywhere from 11 to 5. I just learned from you, by the way, I was surprised. Could be as high as 15,000. Because they actually don't even have a strip model in the ad. Nissan, for the Micra, doesn't have enough cars to meet the number of ads that they're running for that car. Okay, show me the next picture we've got up. Tell me what I'm looking at. So this particular vehicle, this is a, a used vehicle, but it's actually been placed by, by a, new, a new car dealer. And as you can see, it says 18.5 plus taxes and license. That looks good, but keep reading. Pricing includes 4,000 down payment or equivalent trade. So the actual <laughs> price is 22.5. It's 18.5 after you've given them $4,000. That's an illegal advertising. So they can't put that, even when it's put that clear underneath, that's still not good enough. It's got to be trade in that in top an airplane, price. It might be $1. No. You could sell the car for a dollar and a Boeing if you want. <laughs> it's yeah. stupid. No, the law is clear. It's, this is the price of the car. What, it's the drive-away price of the vehicle 
plus HST and licensing. So I see a lot of, is this the same on leasing? Because I'll see a lot of times the small print, you look underneath and you've got to put down your firstborn as a down payment, right? And usually if you're leasing, it's a lot of people, because we're broke. I mean, we don't want to be. And that is allowed in leasing. They can do, okay. That is allowed So it is leasing. a different thing, That's leasing a, and buying. It's a different animal, and it's okay. actually a different piece of legislation that governs uh, leasing advertising. It's the Consumer Protection Act as opposed to the Motor Vehicle Dealers Act. It's, it, it, it's a different animal. Consumer, yeah, it's all animals, you know, so it's really hard sometimes to know what we're dealing with. Let's look at the next one. I think you've we got, have one more. You've got one more picture, I think. Can we bring the, can we bring the next one up? Okay, so this is, you can see the writing on the windshield of the car, and I think there's a close-up of it, if we can switch to that. Very, very common, you'll see dealers that are advertising this way. That's an advertisement. That's, That's an inducement. They're trying to, con they're trying to interest you in buying that vehicle. And so. it, is, is it possible to switch to the next picture, the close-up? And you'll actually be able to read. So you can see 32880 plus HST and license and admin. That's illegal. The administration fee must be included in the advertised price. And that's an advertisement. So that's an advertisement. So the Absolutely. talk on the cars, that's an advertisement. That's an advertisement. Can you explain, George, admin fee? This is magic. These numbers, they're not consistent between sometimes within a dealership from car to car, those admin prices I hear from viewers and readers go from outrageous to, you know, understandable, but well, not really. What governs them. those? How do we, how do those get set? Uh, s uh, one of the managers or, or gets to get together with another manager and they calculate how much can we get away with. <laughs> okay. That's really what it is. Uh, the numbers, depending on the province, vary from zero to as high as 499 599 So clearly it's, Nobody could stay in business if his cost of administering something was six hundred dollars higher than another dealer in the same market. You couldn't do it. So actually, it's not really the cost of administration. It's whatever else you put on. So is that administration a like heating, power, the guy that clears the lot, yeah. all the, the window washer, overhead. all those things are all called overhead normally, and they yeah. should be built into the price of the vehicle. That's what. I would think, because everything else I buy, it's built into the price of whatever I buy. Right, like, like a pie maker doesn't charge you extra yeah. for the plate for and yeah. packaging. Yeah, but a I car dealer does, and a car manufacturer does. It's actually not correct. So is that a place where consumers could conceivably chew away at the price a bit? We talk about no, slender No, that's margins. the funny part. You know, when we go out and we mystery shop, it's the one place where you can't actually get them to take it off. If you really put up a fuss, what they may do is drop like one charge if there's two, or they may drop the price of the car by an amount equal to the admin fee, but they hang on to the fee. They're like a Doberman with, with like your leg, not even a dog with a bone. And I find they don't, let it, they don't let you get away with it. Terry, you've had experiences with that. You say that if you really hung on like for, I don't know, half an hour, you might get them to drop <laughs> it. Or what's your well, sense of it? Well, it's I, easier to let them get them to drop the price of the car, I find. That, that, that's probably true very often. Uh, I mean, it's a negotiation very often, buying a car, uh, it, it's a negotiation. Um, if, but if a consumer encounters a dealer that they've seen an advertised price, let's say they've seen $10,000 in the, in the newspaper on, their, on the website for the dealership, and they go and the dealer says, yes, that's the price of the car is 10000 but there's a $499 administration fee, my advice and Ombic's advice is simply walk away. That dealer brought you to the dealership on false pretenses, by advertising illegally, and they don't deserve your business. Walk away, shop somewhere else, and please report that dealer to OMVIC because there are very serious uh, repercussions for failing to advertise an all-in price. The thing is, if, if the everyone thing is, is obligated sorry, to sorry, sometimes the dealers get cute, so you, you'll see ADM. Mm -hmm. That actually is an, is an abbreviation for additional dealer markup. That's what their lawyers told them they could do to get away. Or ADP, which is a data processing firm that dealers use. So you might confuse that with, I don't know, IBM, ADP, it's the same Well, you're business. being hit with all these acronyms on your site. Additional there, dealer profit. That's what it means. That's so, all it means? Yeah. Well, so, who doesn't want additional profit? Exactly, but they don't call it that. So, um, so and it, it looks like it's a government item because it's often pre-printed on the contracts that they have. So that's that's the kind of situation that's that what we're dealing with. Yeah, and okay. it all, doesn't only hurt customers; it also hurts the dealers who don't do it because suddenly all their pricing seems out of whack in their ads. Okay, the Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Onvik returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls 416-446-7090. <laughs> Thank you. 
This program is brought to you in part by Crown Rust Control, keeping vehicles looking better and lasting longer since 1986. 1-800-267-5744 or visit us at crown.com. I'm Vic, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, warns consumers to beware of curbsiders, illegal unlicensed dealers. Posing as private sellers, curbsiders often sell vehicles that are rebuilt right off. Consumers are only protected when they buy from a registered dealer. Upon an unoccupied boat raises immediate questions for rescue professionals. Did the boat simply drift away from the dock or has the operator fallen overboard? Rescue personnel will first search the boat for any emergency contact information to make a call and determine if there truly is an emergency requiring response. Without this information they have no recourse but to think the worst and launch a formal search which over time may be expanded to include a number of additional rescue boats and even aircraft. By having accurate emergency contact information displayed prominently in your boat, rescue professionals can quickly make the calls and determine if a real emergency exists. And if so, possibly obtain vital information that could aid in your timely rescue. For more helpful information about boating safety, visit csbc.ca. Welcome back to the Lemonade Car Show brought to you by OnVic. Tonight we're talking about consumer protection with OnVic and of course we'll be answering all your general automotive questions. Joining me is Terry O'Keefe, the Director of Communications for OnVic and George Inney, he's the President of the APA. We're back from break. We apparently have one picture left that you brought with you, so okay. why don't we get to that before we uh, carry on with the um, legislation that people are trying to find their way around. Uh, a common type of ad you'll see on Kijiji or AutoTrader, one of the online uh, sites. And I know it's a little hard to read, at least on our smaller monitors here, but if you get to the very bottom of that, it says plus administration fee. I think, it, I think that one's actually $5.99. And interestingly, this is an advertisement by a dealer who'd already been through our discipline process once and had been fined for doing exactly this thing. And. Uh, and as George had, had said earlier, not only is it unfair to consumers, because the MVDA is meant to provide transparency to consumers, but it's really, really unfair to the dealers who are advertising well, I was just properly. Say, it should be a level playing field. If That's everyone's exactly going to suck right. up that 400 bucks or whatever it is, then they're all doing it equally, I would think. And it, so does this come back to the consumers? Is it on us to call people out when we see it, like you said, and report them? Or do we walk away and get mad and just go somewhere else? Well, no, I, th I think that consumers can actually help drive compliance. I think that we can have, if, if a consumer says to a dealer, I know about all-in pricing and I know that you can't do that, that is going to help drive compliance. The, that That's dealer, radical. <laughs> the regulator, come on, the regulator is, is getting the of customers to actually educate them. That's uh, unusual. I don't know that, uh, maybe they do that in Quebec, but I don't think any other province has anything like that going on. Well, and that's why we're running a campaign. We, we ran it in May, and we'll be running it again in the fall. And it's simple, all in pricing, it's the law. We want consumers to know this because if they know, they can tell the dealer, I'm not paying that, I'm out of here. Dealers will stop doing it. And the thing is, consumers are always asking for tools that they can use so they don't feel so overwhelmed or intimidated or ripped off. You can pick whatever word you want. Everyone's going to argue with me at some point on one of them. But we say it's not a great process and we feel we have no power. So you're right. If, if we know those are the things we can go in and say, what's the, what's the problem? A car salesman is going to hate me? Uh, oh, well. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. Some of them can be a little bit over the top. Do you think... Oh, are it's the not that easy. Okay. You, you just saw an ad. You called. You drove half an hour to go down and see the car. And they're going to beat you up over it. Well, you, you're already there 20 minutes before they told you about all the extra fees. And you kind of like the car. It's the right color. You're going to have to start all over again somewhere else. And they're telling you, they're making it sound like it's normal. So I think it's quite hard for a customer in some situations. But if we have this education program going on, or someone's watching this tonight and they're going to tell mm -hmm. people, because I know a lot of people, for 500 bucks, they're going to go out of their way. Mm -hmm. I think we have this sliding space of what will suck up like I won't use a coupon I'm sorry I can't be bothered carrying around a coupon for 50 cents in my purse because they expire and I lose them and they're all over the place 500 bucks that'll get my attention on something that big so I think that's a big enough thing that people might walk out on 125 bucks 
And I think I think that's, that's a, I think that's an important message. I really do. That and you know, consumers should know about all-in pricing, and and not let a dealer charge them fees in excess of that advertised price. And it's a term we're familiar with. All-in pricing is not new. You didn't invent the term. So it's something we've heard and it's, you know, well, been you used Well, you know what, what is tricky, unfortunately, is that you kind of have it in Ontario and you also don't have it in Ontario advertising. There is, it's a real big problem when the car makers don't, don't play by the apply. rules. Yeah, and they, the problem is that when you go and see them, like when they, when they, are, when they have to be like uh, put on a good face, I think it was last year. They all said, "Oh yes, we're complying," and some of them are. The, yeah, some exactly. Car some of them are. Or sorry, some manufacturers mm -hmm. actually do include the freight charge in their advertised prices, and others don't. So you really have to pay attention. Read those ads. Right. See who placed it, and read the fine print. And you're right. It's a. It, there's not the same level of transparency, though, in many manufacturers' ads that is required in dealer advertising. And my sense is that we're short-sighted. And I mean, you don't control that, but the original decision to let them off the hook, because apparently in APA's view, they can't be trusted to police themselves. So I, I'd like to hope that uh, you know a show like this will help, and your program, your campaign this fall will help as well. Terry, you mentioned doing some secret shopping yes. and going around to do that. George, you kind of invented secret <laughs> shopping in the car industry. Yeah. We were early on for Canada. We were one of the earliest people to do it. Well, that W5 show is still making waves that you did. I mean, it's still reverberating, which is great because, it, frankly, you got to clean it up. Is that is Onvik going to do things on that kind of scale? Are you doing this ongoing? Is this a campaign? Oh, this is something that will be ongoing. I think. Um, I mean, the after or, or even during the program that that George and the APA were doing the W5 program. I mean, the charges that we laid. Uh, as, a, as a result came from our own undercover shopping. They weren't based on the shopping that George and his team did. It was our OMVIC investigators and inspectors going in doing undercover shopping and in many cases repeating what, he, uh, what George and his crew had found. And in fact, interestingly, one of the dealers that got the, the pass from you when we shopped them, just to show you that it can depend on the individual salesperson, when we shopped them, we actually had issues and ended up charging that dealer. Um, well, actually, it was one of the few times our work has ever been benchmarked because they visited the same people with up. a similar uh, qu uh, design questionnaire mm -hmm. yeah. and found 50% more things wrong than we did. Oh. Isn't that wild? So I was just thinking, that, well, at least, you know, people say sometimes that, you know, the APA is too tough, but here is a, another party using a similar method and they found a lot more. See, so. I don't think consumers ever say the APA or OMVIC or any no. of these legislations <laughs> the are critics. too tough. They don't. It's the people that it's to their advantage not to have it. And I mean, I've had guests on that aren't real happy sometimes with some of the questions, except for consumers. And frankly, that's why I'm sitting here. I mean, I represent normal people who are, you know, getting stuck with the, the tab for this stuff. Is there any discrepancy be, like if if I'm looking at a big dealer's ad is it more likely to comply or is there really no rhyme or reason uh, I, I don't think that you can make that uh, blanket blanket statement I think that we find that there are small used car dealers who advertise really well who provide complete disclosure who provide excellent services and products to their consumers and I find you know new car dealers exactly the same way and then you'll find the non-compliant from both communities as well. Okay. So there's red flags all over the place. Well, it's I will tell you one difference. The new car, the used car dealers association is, is much more behind this. Uh, we found this year when we went out, the new car dealers needed more tr fixing up, like training. It's a small sample, so I can't yeah. generalize for all the province. But what is clear is that used car dealer association came out swinging for all in pricing, and the new car dealer association was just quiet. Really? Yeah. So yeah. So, the so you see a difference there as well in terms of the commitment to improving standards. So the traditional image of used car not sellers Not true is of not the used true. car dealers no. association okay. in Ontario. I mean, that's, that's for sure. I they're not traditional. In, they're very untraditional in many yeah. ways as an association. I, I, I think that both trade associations have embraced these new regulations mm -hmm. because it, it was a term that you used earlier, creating a level playing field. Not, it's not. It's good for consumers, but it's not just good for consumers. It's good for all dealers if we can create the level playing field. But to do that, we have to have all dealers playing by the rules. And so the dealer, the dealer and trade associations are supportive of these new rules because they know that the majority of the dealers who are compliant will benefit 
if we can yeah. deal with the ones who are non-compliant. So it's like getting people to get their vaccines, get vaccinated. Hi, Angus. Thanks for calling Lemonade tonight. You have a question Hi, for us? Hi, how are you? Good. Go ahead. I'm uh, an OMVIC registered broker, and I was just actually seeking some clarity on the all-in pricing loss as I had uh, an interaction with a manufacturer dealer today. And what I was told is that the price of the car was not necessarily plus HST and licensing, but it was plus taxes and licensing. And these of taxes, of course, were air conditioning tax, tire tax. Is all-in pricing supposed to be HST and licensing only, or can it include other taxes? It's HST and licensing. Period. Yeah. And I'd add something else. There is no air tax. A tax means the money is collected and given to the government. But actually, the manufacturer or the dealer collects the $100 of air tax and puts it in their pocket because they don't give it to a government. They actually should be charged. If another retailer were doing it, it wouldn't be permitted. There is one manufacturer, by the way, that has no air tax. It's Toyota. On their website, they say it's a reimbursement of the air tax we paid at the factory or when it was brought in to the government. So they don't actually pretend it's a tax. They call it, they call it what it is, which is we're just charging you for something we paid before. That, that, and by the way, that has to be included in your all-in price. The tire tax is not a tax. I think it's an environmental levy. Tire stewardship fee. Yeah. yeah. So most problems, yeah, but I mean, it's yeah. not, it goes to recycling tires. It's not something that goes into general revenue of, of your but province. But the only thing that can be outside the all-in pricing is HST, HST and, and license. Ombic fee, five dollars? No, that has to be included in the all-in price. Wow, so that's all of it. Yeah. I hope that helps you tonight, Angus. Thanks for calling. We have a question that came in ahead of time on the show. I'd like to ask both of you this. I put a deposit on a car on the weekend. I called on Monday to cancel, but the dealer is telling me I can't get my deposit back. What are my rights? Most of the time, uh, it's a, let, me, let me rephrase. It's a common misconception that there's a cooling off period in yeah. this province when you sign a contract to buy a car. Uh, if you if you if you si if you buy a gym, you get a t uh, sign up for a gym, you get a 10-day cooling off period under the Consumer Protection Act. Door-to-door -door sales, 10-day cooling yeah. off period. There is no cooling off period yeah. when you sign a contract to purchase a vehicle, um, unless there was a clause on that contract that made it conditional upon spouses or partners approval or something like that um, unless there's it's a conditional contract, uh, it's, a contract. It, it's a final binding legal agreement so that means if he doesn't want to buy the car he's gonna lose his deposit not necessarily not necessarily they basically the dealer has three options uh, they can return the deposit as a gesture of goodwill and quite mm -hmm. frankly I would suggest anecdotally over 50 percent of dealers do that mm -hmm. uh, they could sue the consumer and try and force them to take the vehicle never happens very very expensive uh, and the other thing though that could happen is that the dealer is entitled if they choose to to seek liquidated damages the dealer is probably going to incur costs because the consumers walked away they might have to advertise the car again maybe they'll have to detail it again if they're paying interest because they're, they borrowed money to put the car on the lot yeah. there you know that is legitimate co uh, costs that the dealer can recoup so let's say you gave a thousand dollar deposit uh, once the dealer has sold that vehicle, he determines, uh, or she determines that the liquidated damages are 400. They would keep the 400 and return the 600 to the consumer at that point in time. I know we've asked this question before, and uh, people from the APA have said often we'll, the dealer will try and get you into the right vehicle. Like if that's the one that's just not the right one, and they'll look around and. They, oh, that's I've, a difficult game because you won't necessarily get the same break on the price on the other vehicle. I mean, you, the real answer is... Will, will they try and work with you, though, or are they just No, say if you will work with the dealer, yeah. they're holding the big end of the stick. Okay. So the reality is, I mean, yes, if it's a used vehicle, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you might be able to buy a different vehicle at the lot, but you'll have trouble getting the same level of discount on Monday that you negotiated on Friday if you, if you try and unravel the deal. So when you sign, you sign. Yeah, and, th and that's why we talked about 2010 when all the new regulations came into effect. One of them actually requires the contract that you sign adjacent to where you s the consumer signs in 14 point bold font. It actually sets out the type and style of yeah, font. I could see it, it has to say sales final. In, uh, and the reason that it's there is to try and at least alleviate this misconception that there's a cooling off period. We actually surveyed 800 Ontarians less than two months ago about this issue. Only 13% of Ontarians know there's no cooling off period. Wow. 
45% thought there was, and the rest didn't, were unsure. Why aren't they watching the show? We talk <laughs> about this all the time. Yeah. Like, we go from vacuums to cars. It's like, they didn't bring the car to you on your doorstep and force it on you. You went to them into their place of business. and Well, other beat. places in retail, you can get money, your money refunded if you haven't used the goods. Here, you didn't even take delivery. Yeah, but it's you, normal. But we're, we're finding out, you always find out the first week of January when someone has bought Christmas stuff and they can't get their money back, only store credit or nothing, and people go, wait, well, I'm into, and it's like, no, every store is allowed to set their own policy. Right. We've been hearing this forever, so it shouldn't be a shock that a car dealer. But the other thing is, if you're feeling pressure on Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock, walk out. Yeah. The Good. deal will still be there Monday morning. And well, that pressure it's, it's the end be. of the month. Yeah. Monday, the, deal new, the new promotions may come in. I might not be able to give you the $2,000 off. Your invoice price you may not get it next month. I just don't think, if I'm feeling pressured, like hard, then I'm not going to do it. Because somebody will sell me a car. Lorraine, are we going to do a deal today? <laughs> no. uh, Lorraine's bought a lot of cars, yeah, George. I think, so. <laughs> I think that's good advice. If, if, if you're not ready to sign the contract, don't, because yeah. it is a final, it is a legal binding contract. And it's a big deal. Like, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's a 99 micro, it's I a lot of money. If I could offer some advice to people who want to unwind a deal, you could remember this for the next time you sign a car contract you don't want to go through with. Don't invent an illness. Just when you want to get out. You know your, your somebody relative is just having an expensive eye operation that you can only get in Cuba, <laughs> and you have to pay for the airfare. It's terrible. Nobody e cares. The, not only do they not care, what it, they've all heard them all before. Yeah. Plus, um, what it projects to the dealer is weakness, is that you're actually not confident. You're better off just coming in and saying, I don't want it, and let's sit down now and see how I can unravel it, or what are you able to do for me? now that I don't want it. I, I, it's really bad. It puts you totally on a bad footing if you invent some story. And then later, when you want to get the regulator to help, of course, you're not going to tell them that you're doing the eye operation because it's ridiculous. Everyone knows the dog ate your homework. Yeah, exactly. The dog <laughs> ate your homework. So it, it, just, it just makes your situation harder to unravel. Or the horse. But I'm really glad George said that when you're trying to get the regulator's help because if you are trying to get out of a contract and you're having difficulty negotiating how it's going to end with that dealership. You can contact OMBIC and our complaints team and they will try to assist. Now in this instance of course we can't compel the dealer to return money, only the courts have that authority. But absolutely our complaint, uh, complaint handlers would try to assist to find an amicable solution to the problem. And it always helps if the when you go in and hear the other side of the story and they go, the guy lost it in my showroom and started screaming and yelling and everything else. So the calmer you can stay. If you're not getting what you want, just pack it up and go and uh, give on the There is a, a way call. around this. We have a buying service yeah. at APA. Okay. It's true. Yeah. It's commercial, it's true. Uh, but it's not only that. Yeah. That's why we have that service. There is not supposed to be pressure to get you to close. Mm -hmm. The person you're speaking to is supposed to deliver on everything they promise verbally. It goes into the contract. And if there is a problem, because of the continuing relationship APA has with a recommended dealer, we're usually able to just... You've got a lot more leverage than an individual buyer. The dealer has a different interest, and also that referral business is treated differently from walk-in retail business. It's just the na nature of the game. So let APA take away all the pain. Well, we take away most of Ahead the anxiety. Of and after most the of the anxiety around the, around the purchase is okay. gone. Uh, the price is pre-negotiated. It's, it's a very different relationship. And I think sometimes the public, um, you know, it's hard. You've got to get that message across because you really should enjoy the car buying process. And that's what our objective was when we created that service. A good price and also a really good experience. And I think it's fair to say, like, I've always said that car dealers deserve fair, like, fair income. I mean, if you do a job, you deserve to get paid. I've got sometimes people are trying to get a car for 10 bucks over invoice. They're determined to get it down as cheap no, as they invoice, can. No, invoice, last month, Hyundai. Oh. The manufacturer claimed you could get it for invoice. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. expectations yeah. have become completely nuts on the consumer's part as well. I was going to say, the consumers are hammering so hard sometimes, it's, they go against their own best right. interest. Because right, but you'll blow yourself yeah. up in the business yeah. office sometimes when you do that. Yeah, right? that's true. So. Well, the other thing is if you do have a problem, the dealership's not going to be rushing to help you if you're the you guy. You know, I'll tell you something. The service department is run like a separate business, so oh, the yeah. fact that you were like, negotiated like a maniac in the showroom and paid the lowest price of anyone last month. You go back to service, it's a completely new game. That's my sense of it. You may be treated better because you bought a vehicle there. Yeah. So in the 
uh, issue of a gray area or your few couple of thousand K past the warranty, mm -hmm. they'll be better to you. But um, they don't speak to the showroom. The they don't really know what you paid for the car. It's actually extraordinary so to see how separate they are. they have to find out on their own that you're an idiot. <laughs> well, hopefully you're not. <laughs> well, most dealers are interested in re repeat business. Yeah, it's cheaper. They are. It's easier. They really are. Yeah. And everyone you know. <laughs> it's, it's much easier to keep a customer than to try and attract new ones. Yeah, that's the same in any industry. Okay, different kind of question here. Uh, two months ago, I bought an 09 Altima with 75,000 kilometers on it. There's been a lot of problems. I just did a VIN search and found out this vehicle is from Quebec. I wasn't told this. Can I get my money back? Under the Motor Vehicle Dealers Act, there are six disclosures, if they're not given, automatically triggers any customer's right to return that vehicle and get back all the monies that they paid within 90 days of delivery. Those six are failing to disclose that the vehicle was previously a taxi or limo, police or emergency services vehicle, a daily rental with some provisos that for that one, the make, model, and model year of the vehicle, if the vehicle was branded, and if the true distance the vehicle had traveled had not been represented on the contract out-of-province registration, while it's a required disclosure, in and of itself isn't easy grounds for rescission. So that doesn't trigger an automatic... It no, doesn't automatically the, trigger rescission, no. The other rights mm -hmm. are really powerful, uh, those six other reasons, mm -hmm. and you don't get those in other what provinces brand, that what way. What do you mean by branded? The vehicle was written off and was salvaged. It's been repaired and now wears the brand of rebuilt. Okay. That has to be disclosed, and if it's not, and you've bought it from a registered dealer, you simply to go you go back to the dealer and say, "I'm returning this vehicle. I want." Uh, basically, the deal is unwound. You get back everything that you've paid, and if there's any trouble with that, you come to us. Okay. I'm, I'm taking notes here. This is <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we we refer to those as the six deadly sins. It's, uh, <laughs> you, you, they're very important disclosures that must be provided. And when I say have to be provided, just telling the person isn't providing disclosure. It has to be in writing on the bill of sale. Okay, so we've uh, we've we've got all these rights. I find a lot of people don't know what they are, and they don't avail themselves of them because they're not familiar with them. And part of this is educating yourself, not just on the kind of cool car you no, want to buy. To find out. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult. And, and I encourage consumers to visit our website, omvic.on.ca, because all this information is there and is available to them. It's a, it's a great resource. And again, you can even call our complaints team. We call it our complaints team. But if you have a question before you purchase, now they're not going to do the same kind of, uh, unlike George, they're not going to recommend cars to you. But if you have a question about the buying process or about what your rights are, they're absolutely Absolutely, there to help consumers. Good. So this is a two-handed approach to this, which should work. Okay. I signed for a demo. I saw advertised in Auto Trader. The dealer is asking me for five hundred dollars above the agreed price for secure ride. This includes nitrogen and tires, road hazard insurance, and apparently all their cars have it, and I don't have any choice. This is part of that pre-installed stuff that dealers do, and etching is one of them. Um, Nitrogen in the tires, which I think is a crock, even though I've got nitrogen in my tires. But what 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 can a consumer do about those things that are already in there? Two two parts to that. Uh, it, it's difficult to tell from that from the question the way it's asked. Five hundred dollars above the agreed price is that above the advertised price? If it is, and the dealer is saying it's pre-installed and you have to pay it, the ad the advertisement's illegally. Leave and please report the dealer to us. If the dealer has, uh, the second part though is, if any dealer has pre-installed a product or service on a vehicle and you don't think it has value and you don't want it, tell the dealer that you won't pay for it. It's up to them, it's then up to the dealer to decide whether they'll remove the charge or not. If they will, because you're not interested in that product, great. If they won't, now it's the consumer's decision, do I want to buy this vehicle or not? And if you don't, it's time to shop elsewhere. I once advised a consumer with one of those green tire levy things. Yeah to um, ask them to let the nitrogen out of the tires and show up with an air compressor <laughs> on the date of his delivery. But as you can imagine, they had no intention of not making the charge, so all hell broke loose at that point. Uh, they wanted him to, to pay. The, in their case, it was two ninety nine, I think. I've had a reader say that he went to another dealer, like the same uh, make, but another dealer, and it was the same thing at all of them. So is this stuff coming out of the factories with a lot of no, this stuff already dealer done? No, it's in that market because Presumably you went to another dealer in, say, the GTA or in Calgary. 
but dealers in other cities may, probably won't be doing that, or they're doing it about with something different. So they do. GM dealers used to collude to install etching on all their vehicles. Huh. In the, in the early 2000s, they were one of the early first, and they had it all the way across the GTA. Okay, we have to go to break. When we return, we'll be taking more of your calls in our Ask the Mechanic segment. If you'd like to ask our guest a question, we're at 416 446 7090. This program is brought to you in part by Crown Rust Control, keeping vehicles looking better and lasting longer since 1986. 1-800-267-5744 or visit us at crown.com. This program is sponsored by OMVIC, regulator of motor vehicle dealers in Ontario. Buying a car? Only when consumers buy from a registered dealer are they protected by OMVIC and Ontario's consumer protection laws. When you buy privately, you're on your own. Buy with confidence.